they said, Bill, you shouldn't come here. It's too dangerous. You know, I don't like to be told I can't. I like to see with my own eyes. This is one of the most dangerous places that we've ever traveled to. The earthquake pretty much broke an already broken country. The people of Haiti were used to seeing a lot of foreign aid, and, and a lot of that foreign aid is gone. They're used to being exploited, and they don't know if we're here to do that or if we're here to help them. As dangerous as it might be, it's important that we're here. This is called Wolf Jeremy. It's, uh, you know, the poorest, most dangerous part of, of Haiti. Like, there was just a stabbing this morning. We met Maria Bello a year ago. You know, you think of the TV star and the, the celebrity, but Maria is such an advocate and a warrior for the Haitian people. This young 19-year-old girl, the, this group of guys stole her cell phone. They beat her up. They tried to rape her. No international NGOs will work here because it's declared a red zone by the UN, and so for insurance reasons, they won't come. And these are the people the most in need. As devastating as it is in the tent camps, there's nothing more devastating than this neighborhood. The sanitation is horrible here. There's no running water. There's no electricity. Walking the streets, I'm a little nervous about the situation. A lot of people feel in Haiti, people living below the poverty line for sure, that the NGOs um, are just here to make money off of them. Soon after the earthquake, what I found quite quickly is that all of the money pouring into Haiti, so much of it was going to bigger organizations, going through the bureaucracy, trying to figure out, oh, where we're going to put their money, and they weren't doing it. And so we very quickly decided to start We Advance. I don't care if we have to beg, borrow, and steal. We're not going to be another group that leaves the community. We work in the neighborhood to have our pulse on really what's going on with real Haitians. Alita Fishman, our executive director. Hi, thank you so much for coming to our humble abode oh, here. Our pleasure. What we have over here today is a community resident um, who is taking advantage of our facility. And unfortunately, he's been a stab victim this morning. Um, I've had gang members not happy because we had other gang members that had been serviced at the clinic, and I've been threatened to be shot several times. That's how bad it is. I mean, listen, the truth is, it's a bit of a mess, but we're working on that. How much time do you spend here, Maria? Um, I come every couple of weeks. I'm here this week, and then I go back for three days and then come back again. Mm -hmm. But this is where the folks live. I mean, people just shouldn't live like this. Mm -mm, no. I can't imagine walking into that community today without Maria Bello having been there for the last couple of years. Her place has become a beacon of light in that community, listening to what their needs are, working with them to uplift themselves. And I think that's what it takes. I think it takes a direct involvement. When we were in Haiti about a year ago, I met a man named Fritz, and he told us a story how he lost his wife in the earthquake on the day that his daughter was born. She saw everything crumble. As it was crumbling, the debris fell on the baby's leg, and her mother died. Basically, I just walked away after, and that was the thing that always haunted me. I'm a father of two, and I have a wife, and I can't imagine that being ripped away in a matter of minutes. 
J'ai 25 ans depuis ma vie bon ici. Hein? Depuis que je me je suis fait, c'est toujours dans la rue. Maman me dit que avec maman me C'est ça qui est difficile pour moi, moi j'ai deux petits mouns. Puis c'est maman et moi et papa. Puis quand il est Christophe, il a 5 ans. Deuxième, il est Christophe, il a 2 ans. Je ne sais pas si tu petit, c'est loin et qui est petit dans le prince. Je ne sais pas si tu es un petit, je ne sais pas si tu es un petit, je ne sais pas si tu es un petit, je ne sais pas si tu es un petit, je ne sais pas si tu es un petit, je ne sais pas si tu es un petit, je pas si tu es si tu es un petit, je ne sais pas si tu es un petit, je ne sais pas si tu es If you look at the problems of Haiti as a whole, like you can be overwhelmed and not know where to start. Coming back to Haiti this time, I want to stop looking at the overwhelming problem and just start doing something. Messieurs, mes moi, mon frère. Walking up and seeing the chaos around the cars, you don't know what's going to unfold. It shows you how dire the situations are because Fritz, after years, in the same area, he's in the same clothes, and you know it's like time hasn't passed there. Hi, Fritz. How are you doing? Good to see you. Ça va, merci. She's gotten a lot bigger. Oui. Moi, je regarde Christelle. Chaque fois, je regarde, je pense à maman et tout. Is it always chaotic like that? Oui. Bon, qui fait moi aussi, moi t'es là. It doesn't feel safe here at all. The only reason why he's living here is because he has no choice. Et qu'est-ce que tu as vu même quand tu avais l'âge de cinq ou de l'âge de neuf? Tu n'as vu une face à ça, c'est sur moi. Everyone fends from themselves pretty much. Il y a des gens qui parlent, qui m'ont dit m'acheter. Même si je suis souffert avec eux. C'est bon Dieu, qui va me voyager sur eux pour eux. Parce que les gens ne vont pas aller m'abdormer là, c'est un peu de tâche et de tirer à Dieu. He attaches the children to him when he's sleeping so that someone won't take them from him. He's lived his life in fear every night, thinking there's no other opportunities and there's no better way of life. That's not a home and that's not a life. Have you been able to find work? It's very challenging to look for work because of my kids. Christopher's going to school? Oui. What's his favorite class? I like my reading and writing lesson. Uh. If I don't send him to school, he cries. Yeah? How expensive is school? It's very expensive, especially for him, because it's 500 words a month, which is about $12.50. So it's $12.50 a month. Yeah. $12.50 is something that for the people of Haiti, you don't see sometimes in, in a whole month, let alone having to pay that just for school. In fact, for most Haitian families, nearly half their annual income goes towards school expenses. Education for him is like hope for the future, for a better opportunity. What does Christopher want to be when he grows up? Yeah, I want to be a mechanic. I think the biggest thing that I'm nervous about is Fritz is going to be stuck begging just for a chance at the next day. I'm hoping there's something we can do. The Haitian people don't need somebody to take care of them. They're not waiting for someone else to do everything for them. They're trying to do what they can themselves, and they're willing to work hard. They have people trying to help them with employment opportunities. Donna Karen's one of those people. Do you want to get into a proper space with proper machinery now? Okay. You ready? The minute I came here, I knew this was an amazing place. We could get a bunch of these. Hello? 
I don't think people realize the level of creativity here that lives in Haiti. I think we hear about Haiti and the disaster and the tent camps, but nobody realized what is their jewel. Their jewel is the people. The jewel of the people is their creativity. That would be kind of cool, actually. Our foundation, Urban Zen, we create, collaborate, communicate, change. Creating a bead, creating a bag. Out of paper, out of rock. What if we created the necklace to go the same way? Every single person in Haiti is an artisan. And my dream is that every artisan has a job and we could build sustainability for everybody. I've known Donna for a while, but I haven't had a chance to work together to, on any project to help Haiti. <laughs> right, great, great. You know, I want you to Shelly? meet probably a little jewel in the crown. Shelly started this project. It's called the Apparent Project. Yes. And I became familiar with it when I came down here for the first time and saw what the endless possibilities of the people here of Haiti have. You've got to see what they actually do. This is really great to wear. And these, these are all made out of cereal boxes here. You're kidding. This is all cereal boxes. Cereal boxes. Yeah. Isn't that cool? That is cool. They're making necklaces up here. Every single person here is taking this project on for themselves, and it's self-sustaining for them. So each one of them has a card which shows who designed it, the story behind it. Okay. And you're helping support each individual person. <laughs> if we could give the work for the people and to earn an income, that opportunity will give every single person a job, and that job will create a country. This is incredible. Here's the raw material. Cocoa Krispies. Yeah, DiGiorno pizza. Oh, wow. And you cut this Coca-Cola, you cut this stuff into strips, and <laughs> I mean, if this isn't recycling, I don't know what else is. Yeah, for sure. So the product that we sell, it is to really help the people of Haiti. This is horn. The horn was made here, but then Isabel took the horn back to the States, and we showed it down the runway and we have it in our ad campaigns, the same way that we have Shelly's jewelry. So it's really cycled out there to really put it out there to the world. I'm impressed that Don and Karen, so involved in so many different projects with education, with health, and with uh, providing employment through the artisans here to uplift Haiti. My first trip here, they took me to Loon's Orphanage, and the first thing happened is, boy, pulls his arms around me, jumps up, and cradles me. The most wonderful young boy. And I didn't realize until they just said, he's deaf. You're only here today, is that correct? I need to go to Cap Haitian tomorrow. I have a lot of patients to fit up there. But okay. if I can see this boy today, I'll try to help him. Okay. The biggest thing that shocked me about Haiti in general was the lack of education. You know, 50% of the kids don't go to school, and half of the kids who do go to school can't read by the time they enter third grade. The one thing Fritz cares about is hoping Christopher has an education. You know, I wanted to see his school, and I wanted to just see what his activities were like there. Hello, bonjour. Bonjour, I'm Steve. Early George. How is Christopher at school? He is a really good student. He always participating in everything. He loves school. Mes amis. Mes amis. He likes his friends. Yeah. Does he write any words or letters? Come right. You know, Fritz was telling us he hasn't paid since October. Why has she allowed Christopher to still be a part of the school? She doesn't want to send him away. And if a parent comes to her and asks her to please be patient, you know, she understands, then that's why she keeps Christopher here. She doesn't send any children away because education is the key to the future, especially for kids here in Haiti. 
He really appreciates it because she understands that he doesn't have the financial means to pay his schooling. I was impressed with how much the teacher cared about Christopher and how much she did want him to learn and shows her willingness to want to help him. How much does Fritz owe for Christopher's school? He owes $213.75. Would you be OK if we helped you pay for Christopher's school to keep him in here until he graduates? I'm going to be able to send you to school, and when you finish school, you'll be able to help daddy and your sister, right? I'm happy to help. He's a good kid. <laughs> I'm glad I was able to help Fritz pay for Christopher's school, but I don't think that solves the bigger issue. Fritz and his kids are still living on the streets, and I don't know if I have a long-term solution for that. Ransig came to me a couple months ago and wanted to help this family here in Jacques Mel. How did you guys, how did you meet their family? Well, I met uh, her little brother, Didi, when I was here. I was here a week after the earthquake. He was the sweetest little man you'd ever meet. Didi was very sick. He, his heart was three quarters of his chest cavity. He had this enlarged heart. It was a much bigger problem than anyone here had known. And uh, I, I had a plane going back empty. Uh, these doctors came and they said, if you know, we don't get this little boy out of here, he's going to die. So I brought him back to Chicago with me. <laughs> Welcome to America. Is this your first time? Mark. We Mark. We Mark. We had an instant bond. He never let go of my hand. We got him into a children's hospital. He needed a new heart. And he was on the list to get a, a heart transplant. And about five weeks in, things didn't look good. Billy! Uh, how are you? Uh, His time had just run out. Okay. He passed away, this little boy. It's okay. It was devastating. And now that I'm a father, you know, it hits home even more. Yeah, it's okay. I felt like I'd failed. I like, felt like I'd failed his family. To lose a young child is traumatic and it's tough on her. I have some things for you. I brought a bunch of photos and some of uh, his possessions that he left Haiti with so the mom had it, his passport. And he always had a smile, always smiling. Eh bien, c'était un bon petit monde. Dès pour ta vie chita encore, on toujours en vie chita à côté. Monsieur Bill, et après, le monde qui vient après, on vous remercie. Julian et moi nous avons dit, bien, dans son honneur, nous allons prendre soin de sa famille pour lui. Et c'était le deal. En écoutant Bill parler de Didi's histoire, je ne peux pas imaginer le poids qu'il doit se sentir. Je peux complètement comprendre pourquoi il veut honorer Didi et s'occuper de sa famille. Donc, ils vivent juste ici. Ils ont vécu 19 ans, ils ont vécu dans cette chambre. There she is, my girl. It's my friend Steven. How are you, baby? Good to see you. So let me show you the inside here. Basically, you've got uh, like a sitting room there and a bedroom. This is everything. Wow. 
So they all sleep in there. Wow. And this is it. This is it. There was five or six people living in a house that should be built for one and barely for one person. Okay. It's okay. All right? It's gonna be good. You're gonna have a good life, okay? God, that's crazy. So I, I met this family really by chance, and for me, it was very eye opening. These guys are hard workers. Yeah. They didn't take a break yesterday. We worked 12, 13 hours yesterday. I know. It's crazy. You know. And I decided, you know, we may not be able to change all of Haiti. We may not be able to make a tremendous difference, but we're going to make a difference in this one kid's family's life. We got work to do. I'm ready. Are you sure? Now, Bill came to me and asked me to help him build this family a house. I have no clue how to build a house, but I know a lot of people who do. Hey, Randy. Welcome, sir. How are you? I called Randy Mortensen at Worldwide Village because they have a program set up to build houses throughout Haiti. Here's what needs to happen today. The rest of this metal needs to go up. We'll plaster the front. We're still hoping the doors are going to arrive here any minute. We put all the joists up yesterday. Well, now that you got all the hard stuff out of the way, what yeah, can I, I do? Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe some <laughs> slight sweeping, perhaps. Okay. <laughs> do you have a vacuum? Um, I can do yeah. that. <laughs> my man of Haiti. <laughs> I met Patrick on my first trip here. And I walked in and Patrick jumped up and hugged me. And you never forget that hug. You know, it's a hug for life. You know, mommy, welcome home. And I really wanted to take Patrick home. And there are so many children here. You can't call it an orphanage. You know, it's a home for children. <laughs> Patrick's sort of the patriarch of the place. <laughs> oh, my gorgeous boy. How are you? Good? Patrick's that special person for me. He welcomes you. He greets you. Uh, Donna said, this young man, Patrick, he wants to hear. He wants to have that input. And uh, hopefully, we'll be able to help him. This is Patrick. Hey, Patrick. Let me take a look. Hi. We How can... you doing, man? Good to see you. He's very cool. Look at this. And I know if Patrick could hear the difference it will make in this place it will be amazing. Ba, 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 ba. You know when you're praying and you're praying, will he hear? Can he hear? Can he hear me? Let's see what this does for him right here. You know, will you hear the sounds? Ba, 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 Patrick. <laughs> Patrick. Huh? You hear? Pretty good, huh? <laughs> okay, let's see this one. Uh, oh. ba, ba, ba. Hey, man. Ah, ah. say. Ah, ah, ah. Say, ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah. Ah! Ah, ah. Ah, ah. Ah, ah. Woo! Ah! All right. Now, so the reason he makes sounds is because he can hear sound. Otherwise, he wouldn't make any. Ooh, ooh. When I saw Bill and Patrick together, that was the gift of God, to be able to hear the love, to be able to hear somebody speaking, I love you. We got him. Hello. Bop, 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 bop. Oh, 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 yay, Patrick. It's very special for me to be able to help someone in that way. See you next time. <laughs> I'm in Jacmel with our volunteers, Carlos and Snejana, because we're partnering with Worldwide Village and Bill Ransig to help build this family a house after they lost their son. Nice. Didi was the little boy's name who passed away. The goal is, is to build this house in his name, in his honor. 
We got to start handing the sheets up to the okay. roofers. Right. These things are really sharp. As Randy pointed out, you they will finger. slice your finger off. Right. Down so here, where's, that broom? where's that broom? Where's that broom? The broom. I'll take the vacuum. He takes the broom. Let's <laughs> <laughs> do it. We're gonna mix with the cement. This is what we're gonna mix with the cement, right? So we can make, so we can mix it for the plaster. plaster. Oh, it's crooked, huh? Well, I, I saw you kind of bump in front of camera with the with the bicep going. Don't pretend you didn't know yeah. they were there. <laughs> I think we're just trying to put this last one off. I think we're okay. Come on, guys. Ready? For you. Over here. We play over here. <laughs> he's like, he's gone. Okay. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> what I want to do is I want to come back here in, in five years and see the whole block transform. Yeah. Why can't we? Yeah, you know, getting all the locals um, involved right, and start to build. She, she well, I've already got. Oh, she has a question. Oh, we. Oui. Yeah, the question is, um, she knows why you give the house, but she wants to understand what taught you to give them this house. You know, I think it's we have these opportunities to help, and that's what we have to do. She asked us a question. I don't think anybody's asked this before. Why are you helping people? And you know, I've had a lot of opportunities in my life, and I think it would be selfish not to repay those. We realize we're very lucky where we come from, yeah. and you know, our goal is is to arm them with knowledge, to teach them, to to make them feel pride. Like, wow, I can do this. If we can empower them, you enable them to do this on their own, and, and hopefully, this will inspire uh, the entire block to get transformed. Bill Austin always yeah. says, you know, you've got to give them dignity and empower them. Yeah. So then they can go and. Well, that's, you know, the guy I was telling you about yesterday in uh, Port-au-Prince I was helping. You should have seen the, I mean, the tent they were in. He would tie, he, he has a four-year-old and a two-year-old, and he would tie them to him at night because people have tried to steal them in the wow. past. So they, they live in like a, a just a normal-sized oh, tent, like a camping tent. He's never sat at a table with his kids. Mm. So you know, I could put his kids in school or give him a house, but like, you know, I need to help him sustain his future and hopefully build a better one for his kids. Hopefully showing Fritz that somebody cares about him, you know, when maybe nobody else has, you know, maybe that's the difference. find that there's ever more hope for Haiti. These people are amazingly resilient. And they just need a little opportunity, a little encouragement, and they frankly just need a little help. So I turn it a little bit louder? Is it too loud? Haiti has a devastating shortage of health care. There are about 800,000 Haitians in need of hearing care. <laughs> When I first met Bill and Steve, and I found out what they did, I thought, wow, I'd love to do whatever I could do to help them. So O is off, and M is microphone. I have to give Stephen credit for our partnership with Maria, because he's like, Mom, you've got to meet this woman. He said she's the real deal. How's that? Is it in? She just cares so deeply for the Haitian people. I'm terrified oh my God. that I'm going to cut someone's ear off. I've been doing it for 10 I... years. I've never clipped anybody. OK, good. <laughs> They are such huge advocates for putting the power back into the hands of the Haitians. <laughs> good, good, good. When the president arrived at the fitting, everyone got excited. And you saw how much they were behind him, and it just became a mob. This is the time to change Haiti. And NGOs were here are aware of that and are giving their time, their soul, to come and make a difference. In order to change things the way they are in Haiti, we need to bring knowledge to our people. Knowledge is power. 
in Haiti we have a huge problem, which is the fact that 85% of our schools are private and only about 15% are public, which is the exact opposite of what it should have been. So we need to bring education to every kid everywhere in the country. To me, it's, it's, it's part of my duty, it's my responsibility. If they do this, there's going to be jobs, there's going to be income, and that's going to make Haiti stronger, but it, it's, it has to come from that basis. Pasteur, mesdames, messieurs, moi-même comme président du pays qui a une vision, qui voulait que l'école là, elle pour tout le monde. Mais le président de la République a décidé matin, ça veut dire l'école ça va l'entrer dans le programme pour le mener tout le monde l'école gratis. I think if President Martelly can do this at this school, then Fritz and all the other parents in Haiti hopefully one day won't have to struggle to afford an education. Fritz is a single father struggling to raise his kids, and I really want to help him and his family. This is what I was able to find. Come on in. Randy's Worldwide Village. He was able to help me find a house in Port-au-Prince. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you Je dis à la mal visite Kaila ça me très étonné me très saisi parce qu'elle aimerait vendre Kaila. OK. Quoi son la vie. It's another life, it's a new life. Yeah. And then here can be his room. Ah va c'est. Ça a capable champau. OK. Content OK. OK. Yeah. You're welcome. You know, this is directly affecting his children and how they'll possibly have a better chance at life and, and providing him the one thing he really only wanted, which was hope. He's never been on a bed. Does he want to jump up there? Yes, yes, no. Couché. C'est pour lui. Couché. Couché, chita. Pesouli. Nous content? This is the biggest thing that's happened to him in his life. You know, it's a better life for his children. I think they're having fun. <laughs> oh, I think they're happy. Fritz has lived on the streets for 20 years. Can you come in in one day and change that? You know, I think, I think you got to at least try. C'est ce qui est un petit drame qui novembre. Il y a des gens qui ont été en train de se faire des choses pour les machines. Il y a des gens qui ont été en train de se faire des choses pour les gens qui ont été en train de se faire des choses. Je ne sais pas si je suis en train de se faire des choses. Je me dis bonjour, merci en pile. Je suis en train de me faire des choses. Je suis en train de me faire des choses. Oh, wow. Il est tellement heureux qu'il veut se faire maintenant. Je ne sais pas si je dis à lui. Oui, il peut se faire des choses. Il peut. C'est lui. C'est lui. Tout ça, c'est pour. There's this place called the Apparent Project that offers job opportunities. I spoke to the director, Shelly, there, and she'd like to interview you for a job. Yes, One of the things I wanted to do was help Fritz, but I also wanted him to help himself. You know, I needed to have a strategy, so finding that job for him, I think, made everything else worth it. My father, his father died at an early age, so we represent like a father figure to him, helping him out now. He hoped that we can continue a bond with him and keep connected somehow. I'd love that. Thank you. Yes. 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 Yes.
Oui, je suis content parce que depuis que je suis sorti de la je suis bon l'autre pensée. Je pense à Timon et tout. Timon a une bonne indication. asked me to build this house for Josette and her family, and Josette lost her son soon after the earthquake. And they're a family of five, and they've been living in this dilapidated two-bedroom house for the last 20 years. It's hot, and the sun doesn't stop. There are no clouds in the sky. It's like 110 degrees out, 100% humidity. I think this may be one of the hardest things we've done. Theoretically, it's supposed to be even. OK. <laughs> We're doing it so somebody can have a house to live in. Just gotta keep going, I guess. I have no idea how hard it is to stick wet cement to a flat surface vertically. <laughs> the last piece. The finale. The final screw. Perfect. How's yeah. that look? Looks good. That'll get the job yeah. done. It was a very tough day. It was a long day. It was a very taxing day. But it was all well worth it when we saw Gisette and her family walk around the corner and the smiles on her faces. My girl. How are you, baby? <laughs> uh, on behalf of Worldwide Village and the Starkey Hearing Foundation, we've made a plaque for you. And this plaque is going to dedicate the house in honor of your son, Didi. So we're going to hang this on the house, OK? And it'll be the house that Didi built. Oui? I like to thank you all. I like to thank you, Bill. You accept my son like your son. I want to say thank you for everybody, for each of you. Right now, I feel that my family become bigger because I got you guys as my new family. May God bless you. And continue to do what you do. Continue to do good stuff. May God bless you all. When we, we set off on this mission, we thought, all right, we're going to go out and change some lives. And although I, I believe we did change some lives, I didn't expect my life to be changed as a result of this experience. For me, this trip was about helping another person, and, and, but more importantly, helping them help themselves. And to be able to do that with Fritz and be able to do that with Gisette here, you know, has been a remarkable experience because hopefully we left something behind. Think of it as a place of becoming, a place of growth, a place of healing, a place where people gather to fight it out and love it out. I feel like Haiti represents all of those things. Haiti's opportunity here is enormous. Yes, you look at the destruction and you look at all the rebuilding that has to be done, but it's really in the people. Haiti is only three and a half hours outside of New York an hour and a half out of Miami. We could all be here. The depth of the problems, it's not superficial. It's very profound. But I believe that Haiti is a land of opportunity. And Haitian, when offered opportunities, they will not just perform, but succeed. I think the Haitian people 
They have dignity and drive and desire to help themselves. I'm hopeful that we'll see Haiti become the star of the Caribbean.